Today, I'm premiering a brand new series on the doppelgangers between Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Between these games exist people that look identical and may be more closely connected than you think. And today, we start with Granny. In Ocarina of Time, we can find her as the potion shop owner who can provide all sorts of healing salves. The coolest part about her is her pet tiger for sure. However, we don't know much about her. In Majora's Mask, Granny has a different life. She is now the confirmed grandmother of Anju and resides by the fireplace, as perhaps going senile. So how are these two characters connected? Well, if we peer behind the wheelchair, we can see a tiger on the back of it. What's more, in the remake, we can see photos of her with this tiger again. Two different people, living their lives, but somehow connected. And here, it's by their love for this tiger. Continuing my doppelganger series, we're examining the beggar, or is it the banker? In Ocarina of Time, we can find a beggar at various locations, always performing this beckoning action to try to lure people in. Despite being called a beggar, their goal is to trade. They'll offer rupees for your bottled items. They seem to be obsessed with money. In another life, this beggar would become the banker in Majora's Mask. Here, we can see them performing the same actions, but this time, they hoard the wealth in a giant vault. Two different people once again connected, but this time by their need for trade and money. But which do you prefer? During the day, we can see a woman playing with her precious dog, Richard. And this woman actually has a name, Mama Muyan, and is a recurring character in various Zelda games, actually. But in Ocarina of Time, she specifically hangs out in the market. Come night, she will lose her dog and will ask you to fetch him. And if you do so, she rewards you with a heart piece. In Majora's Mask, the same woman can be found, but it's not just her and Richard. In fact, it seems that all the dogs seem to have made their way from the market to the racetrack. If you can find the right dog for a race, once again, you get a heart piece. Two versions, both connected by their need to find the perfect dog amongst a sea of furry competitors. But before I mention, she's been in multiple games, not just these two. But I'll need a whole other video to describe the secrets of Mama Muyan in her Oracle of Ages debut. Okay, so last time we discussed how Mama Muyan was a dog lover in both Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, but she had another appearance in the Zelda series in the dual entries of Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Ages and Seasons were released as side-by-side -side companion games, much like Pokemon, and would require one another to reach 100% completion. If you beat one game, you get a secret code that you can enter on the other game, which unlocks a brand new game with an entirely new plot. If you beat Oracle first and use that code on Ages for New Game Plus, you can find Mama Muyan's mother who will give you a secret to deliver to her daughter. If you do this, the daughter will then ask you once again to look for her dog, completing this will net link a rare ring which prevents sliding on ice. Now that is a secret doppelganger. In Ocarina of Time, after Ganondorf storms the castle and begins his rise to power, we can see some of the havoc that he's caused. In a nearby alleyway stands a soldier, and though many soldiers look the same, this one is special. This one was unfortunately attacked by Ganondorf and is injured badly. Nobody seems to be around to help him. He's kind of out of the way. He mentions that Zelda was waiting for a fairy boy and to go towards the temple just before he dies. This is one of the only times you can speak with him. In Majora's Mask, we see a nondescript guard again, also sitting and waving his arms for help. This is Shiro the guard, and according to him, he's been here for years trying to get someone to notice him. Apparently, he needs a potion to help him. Furthermore, we need the lens of truth just to see him, something we'd normally use to see the dead. It seems to me that these two are two sides of the same coin, one falling into death and one trying to cling to life. Both are a soldier or guard that's overlooked and out of the way. Anju's a character who saw a ton of development in her Majora's Mask iteration, but much stays the same as well. In Ocarina of Time, we can find her as the Cuckoo Lady. She manages this flock of chickens and asks for help when they escape. Apparently, she may have inherited these duties and is trying her best, but there's a problem. She's allergic to the birds and can't get them herself. And interestingly, despite living inside this house with this guy, she's single. Similarly, in Majora's Mask, Anju also has a job which she inherited. She operates the Stockpot Inn and takes reservations and makes food for Granny. However, we learn that she's hopeless. Granny won't touch her food and says it lessens her lifespan, and she's constantly mixing up reservations. Needless to say, no matter what she does, in what universe, she's horrible at it. Well, at least she'll get a husband soon in this world, right? Cafe? In Hyrule Field, as a child, you can run into the infamous Running Man, who sprints his way through the field from sun up to sun down, where he'll take a well-deserved break. If you talk with him, he'll mention how this field used to be filled with rabbits long ago, but they were overhunted. 
Were they overhunted? Or was it the constant walking undead at night? He infamously pays a large sum of money for our bunny hood. But in Termina, the doppelganger there is the same, but also different. This same man has become the postman, and he's delivering letters to a tight schedule. He can also be seen running, always running from place to place, just like his Hyrulean counterpart. What's more is that on the postman's hat itself, we see the bunny ears, the very thing his alternative self loved so much. Huh. They're really more alike than you'd think. The steady and hardworking man, Mr. Barton, runs the latte bar in Majora's Mask. The milk bar is owned by Madame Aroma and is a place to, well, serve milk. All sorts, in fact. In Ocarina of Time, we see a very different side of this doppelganger. This iteration is named Talon, and he owns Lon Lon Ranch. Whereas Mr. Barton was a hard worker, Talon slacks off, and his brother is kind of forced to do all the work. He is known for producing the infamous Lon Lon Milk, and has a ranch for horses where you can meet a pony. As you can see, both of them sell milk, but aside from their dairy connections, these are some of the biggest changes in character of the whole doppelganger series. In Ikana, we meet a ghost handler that contains the souls of four powerful unique ghosts. These are the Poe sisters, and offer you a challenge to quell their souls with combat. Interesting to note that if you beat the temple here, all the spirits are put to rest, and so too is he. In Not Green of Time, things aren't so different. In fact, the ghost handler keeps true to his nature and still collects ghosts. He will take any of them, but puts a high price price on big pose. It seems in either version he prizes holding on to pose with deep hatred and remorse for whatever reason. Sometimes the more things change, the more they stay the same. In Kakariko Village, we can find Dampe, a familiar Zelda character limping around at night with a shovel and a mean look. However, looks aren't always as they appear, as despite his gruesome nature, he is actually kind. A kid roams around in the day trying to be like him, and at night he offers a fun grave digging minigame, but eventually he passes and becomes a ghost himself. But in Termina, Dampe also has a doppelganger, and he also mans a graveyard. Funnily enough, his appearance does not match his nature, much like in Ocarina of Time. But instead of being mean and evil, he is actually dead afraid of the ghosts, and it's ironic that this should be his job in life. Both versions of Dampe may appear cruel and mean, but underneath they're either scared or kind. In Ocarina of Time, we meet a dancing couple in the castle market. They are completely in love and don't want to talk to us. In fact, they are so enamored, if you put on the Gerudo mask, a female mask as a child, and speak with them, the guy says he doesn't even want to look at other women anymore. After seven years passes, they move to the back of the windmill in Kakariko, completely out of sight, still obsessed with one another. How romantic. Now, while the couple in Hyrule were trying to be more private, in Termina, they're a little more out in the open. They even open a store called the Honey and Darling Shop. Each day, you can visit and play with a hearty selection of bombs, bomb shoes, and arrows. And if you complete all three days in a row, they present you with some of their love, a heart. It's odd though. At the end, they ask, are they truly happy? After seven years, I guess yes. In Hyrule Market, we can meet the old man, whom some refer to as the Professor. As a child, he remarks on the mysterious nature of the Sheikah and their ancient pact with the royal family long ago. Apparently, there may have been tension between them at one point, but now they serve as guardians to the princess and thus the tribe. Force. When Ganondorf eventually escapes the castle, he then remarks how he just saw what may have been the last Sheikah with the princess on the horse. Pretty cool coincidence. Q seven years later, and he is now in Kakariko, where he now talks about an eye that can see all truths and even the Skulltala house. This professor seems to be an expert in all things Sheikah. His doppelganger Majora's Mask is much the same. He is a learned old man who now goes by the name Professor Shikashi. Though he only tells this to adults. He doesn't introduce himself to children. Here, he can be seen gazing through a telescope and will offer a look through the telescope to Link. If you gaze through, there are tons of things you can see, but the most interesting thing may just be this guy. This one is quite sad. Grog is the carpenter's son and brother of the Cuckoo Lady. Child Link can find him in Kakariko, where he says that everyone's disgusting. We must be disgusting too. We meet him again seven years later, where he is found in a forest looking for a special mushroom to make some sort of special medicine. He begs us to take it to the potion shop because of its short lifespan. It seems that he isn't able to take it himself. After returning with the meds, Grog is gone. Only the Kakiri child Fado is here, who says that anyone that lingers as an adult is turned into a Stalfos. But what was that medicine for? In Termina, his doppelganger can be seen with a spiked haircut, so he seems a little healthier. But his outlook is rather grim. He says he enjoys watching the chicks roam around, and when you lead them to adulthood, he says he is filled with joy as he can finally see them become full-grown adults, as if he wasn't going to live long enough to see them grow up anyway. In either realm, Grog seems to be at the end of his rope, slowly fading away. One looks for medicine, the other just wishes to see younglings grow up. All he wants is a little more time. Just 
a little more. I love this guy. He is the most laid back dude in all of Hyrule, and perhaps Termina as well. World ending, kingdom overthrown, bah, can't be bothered. In Ocarina of Time, you can meet the rooftop guy atop this roof where he'll give you a piece of heart for saying hi to him. And just look at those pants. That is a statement. I, I don't even know what to call that pattern, but he rocks it. In Termina, his doppelganger's picked up the pace a bit and has a part-time job at the training post, though he can't be bothered to actually help customers. When he isn't working, you can find him trying to climb up this tree for some red rupees. Regardless of where he is, part-time guy is a laid-back dude. The twins are interesting characters. In Hyrule, you can meet them in the castle market where you hear one's attempt to sneak in and see the princess. The reason the guards are on high alert? Blame these guys. They inadvertently tell you the best way to approach the next area, which is breaking in to see a locked-away princess. Q7 years, and they relocate to Kakariko, where again, they tell Link some juicy gossip. Apparently, one saw Danpei's ghost with a secret treasure. Huh. In Majora's Mask, we can find these two doppelgangers have become the twin jugglers and act as part of the Gorman troop. Talking to them will reveal some gossip, including a mention of yet another princess locked away in need of rescue in the swamp. Interesting. Another princess. It appears, no matter where they are in the multiverse, the twins are always laughing and playing, sharing gossip about the latest in the realm.